My guest today is Jeff Erdman with Denison Yachting, and he's a broker for them. Welcome. Hey, nice to see you, Bobby. Welcome to the Doodles Podcast. This is the show where we sit down with other sailors, cruisers, and even people not in the marine industry and talk about things. So let's get right into it. All right, Jeff. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. Cheers yeah. to you there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Yeah, there's my yeah, cup. Yep. There you go. So, all right. So, uh, now, I guess the first time I met you was at the Miami Boat Show. That's right, at the February Miami Boat Last Show. Last year. In 2018. Yeah, we or, took a look. Or 19, at, early 19. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah, February. And so we took a look at the, uh, with the Benitos there. No, the, the yeah, it's Benitos. Exactly. The Benito yeah. 461 and uh, yeah. 51.1 that were just uh, debuted at that show. Yeah, so if, if you're interested, there's I'll probably put a link in the uh, the show notes to that video where we, you took me on a tour of it, so thank you for doing that. So yeah, I appreciate so, it. Sure. So now you are a boat broker with uh, Denison Yachts, and what, what do you all specialize? What do you what do you do with that? I mean, what's what kind of... Well, Denison Yachting is a fairly large uh, player in the marketplace, and it goes from soup to nuts. Uh, we have people within the division that are selling new boats, selling used boats, selling um, insurance, selling financing, okay. uh, documentation, also um, uh, crew placement and charter. Wow. So it is full service. Yeah, full service for sure. So you can you you have clients that can buy a you know they can buy a boat and then kind of do uh, you can just put it right in charter form type thing we can do that okay. we can put it in charter or there's also opportunities uh, for uh, people to charter to try it before you buy it if you're okay. interested in a in a boat that happens to ah. be in a charter service someplace we can put you on that boat and you get an opportunity to see how it operates you've done that quite a lot over your uh, over your history well i think that's one thing that it does help is that you know when i f bought my first boat the rough seas back over three years ago now it's almost yeah she's a three years anniversary of starting sailing doodles so yeah. uh, but uh, uh so i bought that boat and you know i had never really gone cruising before and i bought what i could afford but looking back there was a lot of things on that boat that because it was more of a racing cruiser than a cruiser sure and so there was a lot of things on that boat and so if i if i had actually been able to try it out first and been like okay i need to change this this and this right and so more performance than creature comforts right. and if you want to cruise on a boat you're looking for more creature comforts right. than absolutely performance. absolutely that's 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 uh uh you know that that's the thing is like you know this this boat we're on now is a big heavy boat and it's i mean it's fast i mean i've had it up to nine knots but it's not like super fast but you know what it's got the comfort and i'll trade that for cruising any day of the week exactly you have to learn where to pick your battles right there's a guy by the name of don street i don't know if you've ever read any of his books or followed him out of the caribbean no. But one of the things that he always liked to say that I think is really appropriate is he said, if you wait for the perfect boat, you'll never, you'll never go, go cruising. Yeah. So you have to decide where you're going to pick your battles. Right. What you like and what you don't like. And, you know, it's not just a matter of how much money you throw at a boat. Right. It's it's the design of the boat and what it was built to do to begin with. Well, I mean, that's what I tell people all the time is that, you know, they're like, you know, I, I still have a lot of work to do on the boat. I've, I'm not ready yet. And I'm like, well, you'll never be ready. Oh, that's true. I mean, if you wait till the boat is perfect, well, I mean, you'll never leave because it's that's never right. going to be perfect. Exactly. So so how has the, the yachting market been? I mean, what's going on in the yachting market? Well, at the moment, it's quite interesting because there is a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of um, essentially consumer confidence. And that's oh, really? really what causes people to decide to buy a boat okay. at a per certain point in time. Um, if they don't feel confident, I often say that boats are a little bit, well, they're obviously totally discretionary. Yeah. Unless it rained 40 days and 40 nights, nobody <laughs> needs a boat. All right. So, so you essentially well, we got have our own to arc here one. with the dogs. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry. So when you really want one and you have the opportunity and you have the resources, there is no time like the present. Right. The other problem for a lot of people in the past, at least, is they waited too long in their lives to buy the boat and go cruising. Often the last five years of your life are probably going to be the worst five years yeah. of your life, no matter whose life it is. Yeah. So if you do it sooner than later, you know, it takes a lot of effort to, to go sailing and cruising. There's yeah. a lot of physical stamina and there's a lot to it. And therefore, if you're in better shape, your, uh, your fitness is better, you have better stamina, you're going to enjoy it more. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to say for, you know, okay, 
just do it when you're young. I mean, I've kind of got a unique circumstance being able to do this, but like, you know, that was always my plan is I wanted to retire early and go sailing, but there's always that fear in the back of my mind. It's like, am I actually going to do it? You know? Right. And it's because a lot of people, they plan on doing it and then maybe, you know, you never know. I mean, like I've met some 85 year olds that are, that could easily single hand this boat. And I met some 60 year olds that there's no way. That's right. And you just never know what you're going to be. That's right. And you never really know what the circumstances right. are going to be in the next few days right. or few hours or day, uh, months. Yeah. And I always tell people, I mean, it's, it's you know, it, you know, it depends on just make your priorities. I mean, what's more important in your life? I mean, it, is it the job and the career or is it, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that cruise seasonally. They'll cruise, they'll, they'll save at work six months and they go to the Bahamas and cruise in the Caribbean for six months and come back and go to work and save up and go. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and that's actually a really good way for a lot of yeah. people because it takes that feeling of the day-to-day -day drudgery right. out of cruising yeah. and, and it makes it exciting and fun. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it, it gives you something to look forward to when you're working for those six months. But I mean, and now that the, uh, there's so much, uh, connectivity worldwide, I mean, you, you can work, I mean, the people, if you can work on a computer, it, then you can any, almost, almost every Island in the Bahamas, you can get internet access. Right. Um, you know, and it's getting better and better. Yeah. And, and with 5g on the horizon, right. When that hits, you're going to have better connection yeah. on on a cell service than yeah. what you would at home. Oh, absolutely, and and you're seeing this. You know, now, now they're talking. Like I was talking with, um, it's FMC. Um, it's a friend of mine that actually is a major shareholder in the company, and uh, they've got. I mean, it's still expensive by uh, relative terms, but they're doing like I forget how many gigabytes a month, but it's it's pretty much and they're they're doing it's like a satellite internet for like 1500 a month, which is still way above what I can afford. Right. But that's if it's 1500 now in 5 years it'll be 150. Well, what's amazing now is with a cell phone and there are so many places you can get good cell phone service yeah. and the infrastructure just continues to improve. Yeah. I was in Thailand a few years ago oh, yeah? and it was right after the tsunami hmm. of the uh, the Boxing Day tsunami oh, and they put in all new infrastructure uh, around Phuket yeah. and as part of that the early warning system with the cell phone service and communications in general they just replaced it with all that and it yeah. was fantastic well yeah i mean that, and that's the thing too is that most people don't realize i think maybe outside the u.s or inside the u.s is that we pay probably the highest data rates on cell phone service in the world is that right i Absolute, didn't realize yeah. that but well, you go to thailand and you know uh, you can get you know in thailand i was paying i think a it was like a dollar or two dollars a gigabyte right at, at 4g speeds right you know and i don't remember what it was in the bahamas but i've been in several places where it's three or four dollars a gigabyte but when you think about it okay i've got at&t here and all my talk and text whatever which is unlimited but i don't really nobody you know you can use everything on the internet right i mean i'm still paying a hundred and something dollars a month if you break that down per gigabyte that's probably ten dollars a gigabyte sure you know and so uh you know we, we just it's all the taxes and stuff without a doubt yeah so without a doubt all right so what kind of boats uh you know denison does obviously you know use boats but they'll, they'll do new boats do you have a, a brand that you represent there right uh here in uh florida from more or less daytona beach down to the florida keys we're the dealer for beneteau both power and sail okay and we also have relationships with other companies such as horizon yachts which builds a power boat line um we have relationships with uh with Hatteras yachts. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other manufacturers that with. we can work with but that we're not actually dealers per se as well. Yeah. So we, we were talking the other day, kind of explain to me and maybe the viewers there what to, uh, it's very territorial. I mean, is it kind of like a car dealership type thing where it's like, you know, you're in this area, only you can sell the cars? In or the terms boats? of the new boats, yeah. um, Beneteau has probably one of the best warranties in the business. It's 36 months essentially stem to serve. Okay. And what they want is they want their dealers to be able to service their their clients. And in order to do so, you need to be within a geographic area that it is reasonable to imagine driving to where the client would be. Right. Now, obviously, if somebody buys a boat here and they decide at some point that they want to cruise, let's say, down to the Caribbean or through the Bahamas or... Uh, anywhere Europe for that matter there's nothing in the world that prevents yeah. the client from going wherever they want but generally speaking they'd like the boat to be sold and serviced within the, the geographic area of the right. dealership. So basically the delivery area needs to be in your I mean or, or the intended 
place of space. Uh, space. Let's space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, what what is? I mean, what's the hot boat these days? What's going? Well, at the moment, a fair amount of uh, Beneteau 51 ones have been okay. selling, but you know everybody is gaga over catamarans. So ah, there's right. no doubt about that, and that's another brand that we recently took up was the um, the um, oh Wiley Sharp's going to kill the me. Excess? The, no? excess, uh, the yes, excess. The excess. Yes, exactly. It's a, okay. a new Beneteau catamaran. Of course, Lagoon has been made by Beneteau forever. A lot right. of people don't realize right. Beneteau, Beneteau Group. Yeah. yeah Beneteau Group Genoa, is the largest yeah. in the world. Uh, they build all of the Genoes, as you point out, all yeah. of the uh, Beneteaus, Lagoons, uh -huh. and many smaller brands, including uh, Four Winds, Glastron. Mm. I mean, it just goes Four on Winds, and on. Four Winds, I didn't know that. It's yeah. like, a, like a ski boat type thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's uh, just a wide range of boats, and because of that, again, the, the company just has such immense, uh, immense resources and economy of scale. Right, right. You know, when they go to buy motors from Myanmar, they're buying, a they're buying lots of yeah. motors from Myanmar and all the fiberglass and sails and so forth. But uh, yeah, the new excess catamaran is one that uh, we're representing as well. We're the dealer uh, for uh, the entire state of Florida. And so the excess, well, kind of tell people that it's kind of like a higher end lagoon? Um, my understanding, and I forgive me, I've never actually set foot on okay. one as of yet. Uh, well, there'll be a we'll have a boat tour Tuesday coming up where I went with Wiley Sharp, and uh, he took me on the XS12. Okay, up in yeah. Annapolis, yes. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, the boat will be coming down here. That's our boat. It okay. belongs to Dennis and Yachting. Oh, really? Okay, but uh, they just didn't have a chance to uh, reposition the boat down here as okay. of yet. Uh, in, in any event, yeah, that boat is uh, is the one that uh, you know one of the boats that we're representing. Okay. And so it's what what would be the difference between like the Lagoon Four Hundred and the you know the the, the XS Twelve? I mean, is it is just a high end, higher end? Just I mean, well, when I was on there, it was like the the stitching was better and the and the the, the seats were made out of thicker leather and stuff or well I don't know what they're made out of but honestly I wish I could yeah. say but I am really not qualified <laughs> okay, <and all>. okay. <laughs> fair all enough right. but uh, you know I'm the kind of guy that would I'm far happier to tell somebody that I don't right, know sure. what I don't know rather than just BS somebody and saying, yeah. oh, yeah, this is what it is. Well, hey. I haven't actually gone through it and looked at it and understood that. But the idea was originally to have a slightly more performance oriented okay. Okay. So quote unquote lagoon. Okay. Um, so they're not going with a flybridge boat as an example. They're going with a lower profile boat, single level mm -hmm. sort of, if you will. Uh, they're going with the helm positions upward, which is somewhat controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. But they're also going with with features just to make it easy for a cruising couple to get around on the deck. And essentially, the 12 is a boat that is just under 40 feet mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, quite manageable. Yeah. All right. And so, yeah, so what have you seen the market? Because we were talking about the other day. I mean, they're for, I think, in the last, well, until the last three or four years, the the basically the, the sailing market was going down, right? Now it's maybe coming back up? I think so. And and, and, and thanks to people like you and SV Delos <laughs> right, and, yeah. and Sailing Vagabond and, yeah. and uh, Sophisticated Lady, all of these YouTube channels that are taking people sailing with them, uh, both literally and figuratively. I mean, a lot of you guys have reached out to your patrons right. and other people and taken them out sailing. You've taken people chartering into Thailand, as yeah. an example, and down to Grenada. Yeah. And doing this has introduced sailing and enthusiasm to a lot of people that really haven't been touched by it. Well, I think that that's one thing that's, like La Vagabond especially, they're kind of crossing over from, I think a lot of the people that watch Delos or maybe Sailing Doodles and some of the others, they are sailing enthusiasts. But La Vagabond has crossed that threshold to, now they're just, they're getting people that weren't even interested in sailing in the beginning, I mean, in the, the get-go, because now they've got a, a 1.2 million subscribers. Right. And so, they, they, you know, and so they're, they're making it a little more mainstream. And I think a lot of people from talking to people that come up to me you know that we meet on the street or whatever and it's like oh man it's great because like i never knew that was an option they didn't know that they could go do something like that and, right and especially we we're talking about the younger generations uh you know they're kind of rejecting the whole buying a car and a house and all that because they're doing the alternative living stuff so a lot of, a lot of the people you know the van life people and the you know the, the backpacker stuff they're like wait a minute i can just 
to take my house with me all over the world. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So. And and they're willing to live within a smaller space and they don't really feel like they need as much stuff to be happy. Uh, and therefore, they are getting out. And so, so, like, so somebody that's maybe wanting to get into sailing or wants to buy a boat, uh, maybe they're not, say they are five years from you know, retiring, but they want to start getting, I mean, like there's, there's programs. I think you said, you mentioned that y'all can do this where like you can buy the boat and put it in charter. I mean, and, and your hope, uh, how, how does that work? I mean, how there are you are trying some, to offset some costs? There are some very lucrative and very uh, good programs within the United States for tax advantages right. of buying a boat and putting it in charter. Now there's some very specific rules. You have to work with your accountant and your tax attorney to make yeah. sure that that you're doing it correctly because you could get yourself in a fair amount of trouble right. with the IRS over yeah. it. But that said, there are some very lucrative rules that you could buy a boat, have it in a charter fleet for up to five, six years, and then take the boat out afterwards. You have a couple of choices at that point. You mm -hmm. can phase out with the boat and sell the boat and get another one and roll it back into it and continue on that way. Or if you like that particular boat a lot, you could go ahead and take that as your own at that point. Well, yeah, and so it's like a lot with the, with the tax benefits of it. If you put it on charter, if you basically you you form a LLC or a company that buys a boat and you're basically because you're putting it in a charter, you're making a commercial investment. That's right. And so it's basically the purchase of the boat, like 100% of it's tax deductible, basically. Right. You know, there's depreci accelerated sure. depreciation. You depreciate 100% of the boat over like five years. Exactly. And so, you know, you can, so if you're making $200,000 a year and, you know, and you're, and you're you know, you can, and you're, you can, you depreciate the boat $100,000 a year. Well, then you, uh, for tax purposes, you only made $100,000 that year. And so you're, you're taxed basically $30,000 less and all that. And the other thing is that you really do have to, there's two ways of doing it. You can do it as passive or active. Right. And depending upon how you do that, how active you are in the marketing of the, of the boat mm -hmm. uh, and the actual, um, you know, making sure that it's operational, you don't actually personally have to uh, do the service work on it. You right. can have people at the base do that, but you have to oversee a fair amount of those things and manage those things as part of it. It can't be in, entirely if you want to be in the active line. Uh, you, uh, if But if you're passive, you can be very passive. You yeah. can just basically put it into their service and have them look after the boat for you. Well, so a lot of people that, from what I've gleamed from talking to people is that say they want to do the they, they buy the boat they put it in charter and they're planning to live on the boat in five years so they've deferred a lot of costs by chartering it and a lot of the taxes and so they're they're, they're getting they're basically paying a lot less for the boat than they would have even a five-year-old boat at that time oh, yeah. but what what they'll do is that they'll when they're setting the boat up they'll have it plumbed for a washing machine and dryer they'll sure. have it plumbed for all these things ready to go so that when they do buy the boat because you don't want to put a washing machine on a charter boat no reason no yeah. rhyme and, and and stuff like you know electric i don't know just electric heads or stuff that's gonna fail eventually that especially when it's not taken care of sure uh you have it ready to go so then you just put it in and and then you just add that stuff for it then you're only buying the cost of the washer and dryer or the whatever well and the other nice thing is a lot of the charter companies as part of the phase out program you can have the boat surveyed and what's on the survey list of what's wrong with the boat at that time, the charter company will take care of oh, before really? delivering it back to you. Okay. So, and, and the other thing that I think is a big, big benefit to this, maybe it's the right boat, maybe it's not, but you get the opportunity of using the boat in the meantime, seeing other boats, meeting other cruisers, going to places, and formulating your own opinions of your likes and dislikes and and your needs and your wants mm -hmm. and so you get a you get a sort of again a try it before you buy right. it you've bought it but yeah at least you haven't committed that that is going to be the boat that you're going to go cruising with and i got to say that a lot of people at the onset that is probably one of the toughest things the internet is a blessing and a curse yeah. because you could shop you could shop until you die on the internet. I yeah. mean, there are so many boats, so many pictures, so many websites, yeah. so many opportunities to look at boats online, but until you actually stand on one, sail on one, 
you know, I, I often say that a lot of boats at boat shows are designed for the boat show. Yeah. They're not really as much about actually traveling on a boat. Your boat here is an example. It's It was built a little bit for both. It has that wow factor. Yeah. Everybody loves the teak staving and the beautiful woodwork. <laughs> it's and, a lot of work. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of work. Yeah. But people go gaga over yeah. that but you've got good handholds throughout the yeah. boat you've got a good motion in the boat these things you can't necessarily see when it's sitting at the dock during a boat show or yeah. sit, or on the internet so yeah. i think i think actually having some of those opportunities and finding out what is important to you is worth yeah. it and, and i think that's that's a thing too is that it, it's hard to you can't by chartering a boat, you can get a general feel of what you want with it. Um, but, you know, unless you actually go cruise for a little bit, it's hard because, you know, it's like when you charter a boat, you're there for a week, maybe two. Right. Um, and, you know, you're moving around every day because, you know, you're only there for two weeks. You got to go see every island and do that. So you don't really get to sit on the boat for two weeks and, and really feel, okay, well, I wish this boat had this because you still don't have time to experience sure. it. So, that. so we, when the, the boats that you guys do put in charter like if you have somebody buys it but are they do you have a base for that or is it all over or what how does that work well currently we we don't have a base we uh we had a program for a short time but it's been discontinued and the company is reevaluating what they're going to do next with that mm -hmm. so um we don't have a base for the boats at the moment we did have one in miami beach for a period of time right and uh they're rethinking that position so uh, so as far as if, for the people that they do put it with charter with you it's just it's you kind of put it on the charter brokerage uh, listings like the multiple listing service it, and do exactly that. okay exactly and so it can it can be the boat can be anywhere then that's right okay all right well i i'd say i i you know and, and people don't realize just how you know when you're chartering a boat uh you know if you have four couples chartering a catamaran the cat may cost six grand for the week so it's only 1500 a couple Right, you t and, and you take a luxury hotel yeah. with the kind of views that you have right. at anchors and yeah. while you're sailing around, you can't get that. I, I remember watching one of your shows where you were outside of some very high-priced yeah, yeah. resort that you went to shore, but you were participating from equally nice yeah. position yeah. Uh, as what the people on shore were, yeah. but at probably... I don't know what a quarter of the cost. Oh yeah, not even. I mean, it. You know, I think that was we were. I th I'm pretty sure we were in. I think we might have been in Thailand at that point, and uh, I, because we, it was like a super high end resort. We're looking, we're looking it up, and it was like, I think it was five or six thousand a night for a room. And I'm like, yeah. geez, you know, we paid for that. Well, we didn't pay, but we were. But you know, that was what the whole boat cost for a week. You know, and we're anchored right there, seeing all the sights and hanging out at the restaurant, and the bar, and all that. Oh, yeah, that's the way to do it. But yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing that going back to the benefit of being on the boats in these places is you don't have to schlep all your luggage from yeah. place to place. You've got all your stuff. Once you've been loaded on the boat and the charter companies will help you down the dock with yeah. dock carts and and help you get the pre-provision or help you with the yeah. provisions locally. It's a pretty simple life in the yeah. grand scheme of things. That's one thing I would recommend to to pe people that are going to charter is that if they give you the option to pre pre provision, do it because oh, yeah. you're just going to waste a whole half a whole half a day provisioning. And you don't know where to buy this yeah, stuff, and exactly. you don't know the quantities necessarily to buy. And they you always overbuy. Through, you buy too yeah. much. You buy too much of everything. And they they have for periods of time studied, and they have a nice little checklist right. for you you check the things that you like and and they put them on the boat and, and it's i don't know what the it. extra cost is but it's not that much compared to going into i it. would say it is if you took your time into the equation and your time on vacation what's it worth yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely well it's uh i i will say i mean it, it we've been hopping around on a bunch of different charter boats and stuff uh it's kind of nice to be back on our own boat uh because it was getting tiresome like packing up every other week and moving to a different boat and all that Cause especially hauling around all this gear uh because this that's this got to be up. really really yeah. a big 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 herculean effort yeah. for sure and you probably well just like your studio here this is yeah. quite remarkable well, that we had some have, technical difficulties that you have the ability though that yeah. you can have it set up and you have effectively 
a studio right here mm. on your boat. Yeah. You've already thought through how to do it, you know, what to do with these little covers for your windows in the back so the lighting's right and where to put the microphone. I need to get something and... other than, because uh, I, I put them the other way around. I'm not being sponsored by Garmin, <laughs> so I didn't put them like that. Yeah. So if, if Garmin, if you want to sponsor, say, the Doodles podcast, then uh, we'll put these up here and leave them like that. Right. But uh, for now, we'll do that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Bill Mur Admiral Bill Murray there. That's, yeah. That's a, people keep asking, who is this? This is Admiral Bill Murray. I don't know if you can... Uh, let's see here. Which camera are we on? There you go. Nice. <laughs> so, all right. So, I guess... Uh, so, if, if people are interested, if they're in South Florida and they're they're interested in uh, maybe talking to you about buying a boat, I mean, how can they get in touch with you? Well, I'm at uh, Denison Yachting here in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. It's actually at the Dania Beach office. Okay. Most people don't realize it, but the Dania Beach and Fort Lauderdale, it's so close together that you really wouldn't notice that you were very far apart. We're, we're less than three miles from the Fort Lauderdale airport. Okay. So it's very handy. We have many of our boats right there at the Harbortown Marina. It's a world-class facility. Mm -hmm. We also have an office here at the BMR where we sponsored sure. your meet and greet yeah. last Thank night. Thank you for that, which by the way. Nice, yeah. yeah. A little plug for that, but yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to do that. And then we have another office on 17th Street here in Fort Lauderdale. So uh, we've got three facilities right here in uh, in Fort Lauderdale. We've got about 21 across the country, mm -hmm. and there's around 120 brokers associated okay. with Denison Yachting. So we've got yeah, y'all uh, Denison Yacht. That's not just South Florida, right? That's everywhere. No, uh, California, uh, all up and down the eastern seaboard, okay. all the prime places, including Charleston, yeah. Rhode Island, Annapolis. Uh, okay. You know, so, yeah. Well, all right. So I will put a link to, uh, I guess, the website plus to your email in the in okay. the, in the show notes here. And yeah, perfect. He's been doing this while. He's been really helped me out with uh, you did some technical stuff occasionally and, and all that. So I really appreciate the help. And uh, is there anything else you want to add before we sign off here? Well, once again, I just want to thank you and, and the other YouTubers for breathing some life into uh, a sort of a dying a dying sport. It was made me kind of sad. I've been sailing since I was seven years old. And, yeah. you know, a number of times we would go to the Annapolis Boat Show and they would have this breakfast and they would announce how sailing was doing. And it never really was great news. Um, unfortunately, because a lot of people just weren't getting into it and yeah. they weren't going there. And the other thing I think that's terrific is I think you as an example on this boat will be able to show people once again in real life and real time what it's like to yeah. go out there and do it and have some fun. And so thank you. Sure. Hey, thank you. No, I think after being at the Annapolis Boat Show this this, this past year, uh, I mean, and seeing the line of hundreds of people waiting in line to just see the Vagabond. Yeah. And then uh, Delos had a couple, uh, they did a couple like presentations things and they had a 250, 250 person theater that 800 people showed up to. Wow. And, you know, and doing all that. And so, I think there's been some uh, not pushback, but reluctance from a lot of the because it's a pretty traditional field, the yachting industry, oh, right? Clearly. And so a lot of them are like, ah, what are these punk kid YouTubers coming up, you know? And then I think and and so we saw this this year at the Annapolis Boat Show was that the Annapolis Boat Show saw a, I think they saw a pretty good jump in their attendance mm -hmm. and they saw all the people going showing up to those events and so. Uh, a good fr a friend of mine, uh, Jeff Bach, is actually kind of working on this and uh, trying to get them to uh, basically acknowledge that and kind of may maybe have a, a creator's tent type thing and do that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just to bring more people in, which I think would be pretty cool. So, Without a doubt. I think that, uh, again, the the amount of effort and work that, and money that you guys put into doing this is something that needs to be recognized as value. Obviously, you're getting some value out of it as oh, yeah. well. You get the opportunity oh, to, to travel and, and do things. And you've got a reason, an agenda to put together to do the kinds of events and, and cruising destinations. But what a great sort of, uh, oh, yeah. you know, quid pro quo, as they say. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. No, it's the best thing at, uh, you know, when I, I, I don't know if everybody knows the history of it, like I, when I, I used to be a commercial pilot and uh, when, when, when I lost my license, I thought that was the end of my life. You know, I was like, oh, my world, but it's the best thing that ever happened to me because now I'm going to do this. And it's, 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 it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And I, I'm grateful every day I get to do this. So Well, it's remarkable that, uh, that how life turns sometimes and mm -hmm. what you see is dark becomes light. Absolutely. I, that's what I always say is, you know, whatever obstacles put in front of you, whatever bad things happen to you, just take okay what 
what kind of what positive can I make out of this? Don't just retreat into yourself. Be like, okay, what can I do now that was maybe I was limited before? And so that's why I do it. But yeah, you got some time yeah. that you yeah. didn't have. There you go. All right, Jeff. Well, thank you for coming on thank the you. podcast. I appreciate, appreciate it. the help. And uh, if you if you're in South Florida, you would want to look at a boat. There's a link in the show notes to his email and uh, his or contact. Or you can call. Yeah, or I'll put the <laughs> phone number there too. And uh, you know, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you much. Go sailing. Yeah.